Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today we're sitting down with top 500 Anna player ML7 who is going to give us some advice on Baptiste now that he's had a good play on them. No doubt he will be a top 500 player on this hero too. You can check out all of ML7's details in the description below if you want to see him play this hero live, but let's get started. I guess before we get into the specifics on being a better Baptiste, what is the most important tip that you can give for this hero? Stay kind of close to your team, but not too close as you can be easily focused. Uh, that's the number one thing. Baptista's healing is a projectile, so you cannot stay far in the back as Anna would, and at the same time you're not as tanky as Brig is, so you should stay somewhere in the middle. That's my number one important tip on Baptiste. When would you want to play him, ideally? If you were taking uh, specific situations, where is Baptiste really good, and also where can he be really bad? From a map point of view, he strikes me as a hero that can work out on every map because even though in theory he should be bad on long range maps such as for instance the first part of Junkirk Town, I think he will still be viable over there because we all heard about the legendary bunker camp, uh, bunker camps with Baptiste, Orisa and Bastion which might work really well on those long range uh, sightline maps. From a compositional point of view, I haven't tested him out enough, but one thing I feel like, uh, I would like to highlight actually, is the fact that I do not think that Lucian Baptiste will provide enough healing and utility for the team. Other than that, I think that almost every other composition support-wise can work out. But I think that if you want to play with solo he with Lucio and another healer, should probably go with Ana or with Myra. You sort of mentioned positioning as your main sort of tip, but are there any other kind of general rules of thumbs that people should be uh, keeping towards? Like you used a really good example in previous videos for Ana of being um, kind of in sight with your team but out of sight of the enemies. If your team decides to try and run in and do something stupid, don't follow them. Uh, is there anything like that for Baptiste that really struck out for you? Yes, he, uh, compared to other supports, he's the only support that has instant vertical mobility. Like with Lucio, you, it takes some time to get up, but with Baptiste, with his exo boots, you can just jump straight up into cover or into like a very nicely uh, served, so to say, high ground that can open up a lot of opportunities, both heal-wise and kill-wise. So always be aware of the environment around you and try to plan escape routes. I'll give you an example. Let's say you're playing King's Row. Uh, you're attacking and you're at the first section of the second point. Over there, uh, you can charge your exo boots and if there is noth nothing, nothing that can contest you on high ground, there's a small elevator on the top right section which you can just sit by, near the window, so to say. So for me, on that part of the map, they had goats, for instance. Uh, the Zen was ignoring me completely. I could both lay out a lot of healing and a lot of damage just from good positioning on high ground, thing that I could never do with any other support, apart from Lucio, of course, because he can wall guide. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was which would you rather talk about first, the primary fire that does damage or the secondary fire that does healing? What tips out of those would you want to sort of mention first? Mm, I'd say let's start with the primary fire to clear that out of the way. It seems like it's a tricky weapon to use. Yes, I agree. It's It feels special to Overwatch. I think it's the only like triple burst gun Overwatch has apart from Lucio's, but it feels different because this one is hit scan. Lucio's like a projectile. So... I think that practicing the gun, uh, the gunshots will be a main difference damage wise um, from the damage inflicted point of view between Baptists. I do not think that it will be needed to shoot a lot with him as he is a healer mainly, but we'll have to wait and see. The general thing with his primary fire is that it's very strong short range, medium range is kind of meh, but in short range if there's a flanker or even a Winston diving you in the back. Uh, squishy flanker, I mean, or a Winston diving in the back. Do not hesitate to just go and click at the head because you will deal a lot of damage. If I'm not mistaken, it's 50 damage for a headshot. So if you're really lucky against a tracer, you can triple tap a tracer into the head and she's going to be dead. Another thing I would like to say is do not exclude long range shots because 
this is an example in which um, they can work out. For example, you see a very, um, very low mercy in Valk flying around in the air at a very long distance. There is no way you can you can actually kill her. But if you shoot at her, kind of like Diva shoots at long range mercies using Valk to stop healing regeneration. So that's one example in which you can still shoot with Baptiste at very long range to just try to stop Mercy's healing regeneration in Valk from kicking in. So maybe your McCree or Soldier or even Anna can finish Mercy off with, uh, with their shots. Oh, and another thing I would like to mention is if you don't have anybody to heal, just shoot the shield. Like if there's a shield in front, just shoot the shield. Even if it's long distance, short distance, just shoot non-stop it will contribute to you winning the game. Perfect. Uh, secondary fire then, his main form of healing. Like, surely there's loads of stuff here that you could go on, major mistakes that you see people making. What comes to mind? Uh, first of all, there's no reason to aim at the head <laughs> with his secondary fire, as it's uh, it has a small splash, uh, splash radius, so you should try to aim at uh, the feet or at the ground uh, of your allies. Also, if there's, let's say, an ally at a very long distance and you're afraid of not uh, knowing the route of your right click, you can just try to splash the wall uh, near him so it, he still benefits from uh, um, the AoE that your right click has. And another thing I would like to add is before fight starts, try to aim straight up and shoot some secondary fires uh, into the air so that when the enemy team engages you'll have some healing falling out of the sky. For example, let's say Icon World first point defense, uh, the match starts, you just shoot, I don't know, six, seven right clicks into the air, then you reload, then the enemy should be at the gate. When your tanks are about to take damage, the nades should, uh, the healing nades should drop and they should benefit from the healing. You. Uh, can compensate with it mid-fight, so to say. Now going over the abilities, I wanted to start with the shift, which on the face of it doesn't look like it's a very impactful ability, so I wondered what you sort of thought of it and how and how what is the best approach to get the most out of it. If you do not have any peel, as with Anna for instance, uh, you should try to keep your shift for yourself. So again, only if you do not have any peel because you don't have any high ground or any teammates around you as you cannot heal yourself with your right click. You can only heal yourself, heal yourself with your shift. Other than that, you need to keep an eye out that it's not kind of like Lucia Zora. So the way his shift works is this. Imagine a small, uh, let's say circle for the sake of it. It's a sphere, but let's say circle that the second you activate your shift, everybody that is in it gets the healing over time. But if, if people exit the circle after you activate it, the healing will still go on. This is something that I think a lot of people don't know. For example, you're playing with Dive Comp, which in my opinion, you should not play with Baptiste. But let's say you're playing with Winston. And let's say you're around the corner and your Winston is about to jump. Even if he's full HP, if you press shift before he jumps, or even if he jumps but he's still in the circle, he will receive the healing from the shift after he lands and he's way out of your circle, so to say. And that extra healing, like you can heal him, although you're nowhere near him. And I think that's one of the things that you need to keep an eye out with his, uh, with his shift. So people that walk into it after you heal will not uh, will not receive healing so they will only receive healing if they're in the circle when you press shift and from uh, a cool thing i found out i might be mistaken though i'm still testing it out with multiple heroes it seems that the shift sphere extends more towards the direction you're facing as in if you look straight up at somebody, it seems that the sphere range is bigger than let's say you're not looking at that target or you have your back turned around. I'm still testing this out, but I'm quite sure that that's the way the hitbox is. I think the sphere starts from the edge of his gun because that's the, hit, the maximum hitbox he has. Uh, before we go over the two big abilities being the invulnerability field and the ultimate, what about the boots? How do you get the most out of being able to jump pretty high and far? Um, I would say when you use the boots, a lot of people use them in open space. You need to keep an eye out that you're crouching, so you're mostly a sitting duck 
when you start charging them. So be careful, do not use them in open space. Use them behind shields, use them behind around walls and other stuff like that. After you use it, you can wait, I think, almost a second until you can activate it. So you can do cool tricks such as just charging, getting out of cover, doing uh, some shots, then jumping straight up in the air. What I want to highlight with his uh, boots is um, you can try to use them to dodge certain abilities, to bait better set certain abilities such as Roadhog Hook or uh, even ultimates like Ryan Shatter or Genji Blade. In this particular example, let's say that um, he starts casting his ultimate, you start charging your uh, exo boots, you wait for him to dash to you and then you jump up, which should in return you either escape uh, to cover on high ground and he doesn't have any dashes left or your team will be able to focus him down meanwhile until you fall back down to the ground. So with his boots in general, a lot of people are going to uh, accidentally jump in team fights. So I just want to say be careful with his jumping because when you jump, you have a predictable movement. So against snipers, you should quite avoid jumping straight up in the air. So again, to use your boots, Try to use them when there is no immediate threat from the enemy team in uh, focusing you when you're up in the air. Use them to uh, escape abilities, enemy abilities or ultimates. And also to reposition yourself in very nice spots which uh, are usually unaccessible for supports in the middle of team fights. Now we go over the big ability. The shield that keeps people alive is fairly good at it too. Um, what advice would you have when it comes to timing, positioning, throwing out this ability. There must be quite a lot, but what are the main things that you see that you really want to let people know? I think that the most important thing with his invulnerability field is the, uh, the most obvious one at the same time. You need to try to keep it for ultimates. You need to try to keep it for Graviton, for Hanzo Ult, um, and other stuff like that. So in consequence, you need to ultimate track. Some people, uh, let's say um, me as an Ana player, if I would play in a team probably, I would not have the job to ultimate track what ults they used and stuff like that. That would be the job of, let's say, uh, the Lucio. But if you want to play Baptiste and you want to be really good at him, I think you need to ultimate track. You don't need to ultimate track uh, the defensive ults that they have, but you need to ult track the ults that you need to stop with your E. For example, uh, track if um, Zara has her ultimate, if Hanzo has his ultimate, or even smaller ultimates. Let's say Tracer has not used Pulse Bomb in the last two fights, It's quite, and you see her sneaking behind uh, Yorana somewhere, it's quite obvious that you need to try to keep your E for the Tracer's Pulse Bomb in case it attaches to Yorana. Also another thing with his E is be very careful where you place it. I've seen and I've done it personally a lot of time. Uh, just throwing my E in open space, it can be focused really, really easily as it has quite a big hitbox and it's not that small as it seems to be. So when you use it, keep in mind that your allies need line of sight of it. And the way you use it is you try to hide it around the wall. Let's say right in front of you there are six enemies and you're all six grouped up. And to the right there's a wall that where you can hide your E, your allies can still see your invulnerability field, the enemies cannot see and focus it, so that's a very good uh, way to use your um, invulnerability field. And another thing I would like to note is it has the same trajectory as your secondary fire, so if you have time to throw it, you can use your right click to see where it is. And another thing I would like to add that I, uh, I remember just right now, Let's say another obvious usage is the enemy Reinhardt does a pin onto somebody, a long range pin, and you predict where it is going, where the pin is going to land. Do not throw the E up until approximately the last second, so the enemy team cannot focus it down. Let's say the, Rein does a, the enemy Rein does a long range pin on your Reinhardt, it's clear where he's going to smash your Rein into the wall. Don't throw the E at the wall, just wait a bit because the enemies can focus it down. I think that in pro play, the callout will be like this. His invulnerability field will be the seventh and most important person of the team. The second Baptiste will use his invulnerability field, I feel like everybody needs to focus it down. So this is why it's really important either to use it in the last possible second, if it's um, 
if it, there's no way for you to hide it around walls or to hide it around walls so you can benefit from it a lot more. And the ultimate, another ability that requires pretty solid timing, pretty solid placement. What tips do you have around that? I think that the obvious uh, way you would like to use the ultimate is in choke points. But the problem is that the enemies can walk around the wall quite easy and disengage as they can block they can block uh, line of sight of it. Uh, an example, uh, let's give uh, Icon Mold last point, just around the corner, throw your ultimate there, everybody benefits from your team for amp for, from amplified healing through the wall or amplified damage onto the enemies. But the problem again is it's really easy to break line of sight, like it's really simple geometry on how the wall works so the enemies will figure it out really well. The way I would use it and I think it's quite underrated is try to use it on stationary targets, this including yourself. The most basic example I can give is in bunker comps with Bastion and Orisa, you just put it on the payload, the payload moves the wall, so whatever is in front of you Bastion will melt Orisa also. And the other way that I would see used a lot of times is again on stationary targets, apart from bunker comps, let's say use it for yourself to amplify the healing, use it also for yourself if you want to do a flank, and you can get out and get a kill because you will melt squishies. You can also use it for your Ana. Let's say your Ana's playing somewhere in the back. Just turn around, throw the throw the ult there so she heals a lot of people with a lot of heal. Or you can use it even at a sniper uh, position. Let's say your Widow is playing, I don't know, somewhere way in the back. They're going in and you want to be fancy. The Widow uh, thinks um, he or she is like really good. So... Um, the Widow asks for the ultimate, you can just place it over there in the back. So to summarize, general usage will be in the choke points, and secondary usage, which in my opinion I think I will use it a lot, is use it on stationary targets over here, including um, Ana, Bunker Comps, and Batista also. So we've gone extensively into a lot of the abilities, but when it comes to somebody trying to do what you did with Ana, just solely trying to play this hero to get better at them how would you go about that if you were if you were learning a hero from scratch if you were a very general average rank and you wanted to get better with this hero how would you go about it i suppose just throw yourself in there and try and learn or um the number one thing i would do is try to figure out uh why i die because in my opinion that's the number one tip to improve yourself in overwatch at least because you do not want to be a liability for your team just constantly walking outside of the spawn. So I would try to monitor my deaths as a support to be as low as possible. The way I would die as Baptiste, for instance, is probably if I would vote review myself, is I would jump way too much with my exo boots against hit scans that can easily target me. I would not use my E well on myself and other stuff like that. Another thing to keep an eye out for Baptiste is I would change the way I ult track. Right now, personally, I think I can uh, track the enemy ultimates quite well, both defensive and offensive. But if I play Baptiste, um, honestly, I would not even care what defensive ultimates they would have. I would uh, I would non-stop just think, do they have grab? Do they have shatter? Do they have pulse bomb? And other questions like that. So I can use my E uh, for those abilities specifically. And another thing I would like to add is I would personally play him a lot in every team comp, on every map, just to understand how his gun works, because his gun is really different compared to what Overwatch has seen so uh, so far, at least in my opinion. Both hit scan as a triple burst, and also some lobbed in uh, grenades. The trajectory is kind of weird at the moment, but to be fair, when I first started playing Gana, for instance, I couldn't get used to the nade, it took me one or two months to understand how the nade landed. So just give it time. There's quite a lot of stuff in this video, so any final things that you either want to mention that you haven't already, or really emphasize in this video before we finish up? I would say, in my opinion, Baptiste is probably one of the hardest heroes in the game, from a healer perspective, from the um, multitasking point of view, I would say Ana and Baptiste are the hardest. And my advice on Anna is the same as advice as I will have on Baptiste and it will be applied to me also. At the beginning, with Baptiste, everybody's going to be really bad. Everybody. 
because the hero is very complicated to use effectively. In theory, you can just sit with your team and right click and just heal, but there are better healers for that. The way you crack his kit is insane positioning and escaping abilities with his exo boots, the way you use your shift before team fights or in the middle of the team fights, and the way you use your his ult and his E will also be the main difference between Baptist, really good Baptist, mediocre Baptist, and bad Baptist. So again, the number one thing I would like to highlight is to not be discouraged. We're all going to be bad in the beginning until we understand how the hero works. Just give it time, have fun. And considering that the new patch brought a lot of changes, be open-minded. And again, if you just have fun, you're going to win probably. And finally, where can people see you playing this hero, no doubt? Any other things to really add, I suppose? Uh, if you want to see how I play Baptiste, and not only, you can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash ml7 underline ow, or check out my YouTube at ml7. And for other social media, you have the details on my Twitch page. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do check out ML7 in the description below, as I said. Find more information on the new hero from him there. And until next time, take care. We'll see you next time.